Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary. We'll be reviewing Friday Night Smackdown and we're also joined by someone who may or may not chime in. Guy formerly known as Mr. Pony. We'll see what he if he has anything to say. He's just sort of, uh, how can I say, trawling, I guess, in the background. But uh, this Smackdown, it, I, there's a theme going on and I'm liking it. And I don't think CJ's going to like it, but so much. I don't know, you know if you even noticed it. But we'll, we're going to get into that. So this opens up. Jimmy Uso comes out, and the fans are chanting his name. And then he welcomes everybody to Friday Night Smackdown. He's been wanting to do that for a while. Uh, Jimmy is overly excited, super happy to be back. And he was lacking vocal control. It was almost like he was having an, a severe adrenaline rush and trying to talk through it. I really don't blame him much. If this is what you do, if this is what you love, and then you're finally back and that that crowd hits you, yeah, I've heard enough stories. So, uh, let's see. So, he wants to kick the hell out of Solo Sokoa, his little brother, the, the guy who jumped him from behind, injured him, when they introduced Tama Tonga. Roman Reigns music hit, the fans go silent as they acknowledge his entrance, and man, I, I still think this is one of the, the hottest crowd reactions to an entrance in wrestling history, period. I mean, damn. Literally, they aren't cheering for you, they go silent to respect you. That's, so. It's and it's just a half a decade ago that everyone wanted him gone. Yes. I'm like, do y'all forget that? Because that's when I kind of wanted to get back into WWE a little bit. And they're like, oh, yeah, they hate Roman Reigns. I was like, why? They're like, he's a, he's a baby face. Why aren't you cheering him? They hated him. They hated him, as a, they hated him as a baby face. They hated him as a heel. They just wanted him gone. He had Tai Chi heat. Mm. That's some bad heat to have. Yeah. That, that's some bad heat. And then he became the greatest heel that the fans loved. And now I dare say Roman Reigns is up there. You know, Rock, Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, and all of them. Mick Foley, Mankind, Cactus Jack, Cactus Jack Manson. Whichever name you want to go with him, he's up there where he can't really do no wrong. You know, he could be the heel, but it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to keep booing him. I think he's hit that plateau. Hmm. Um, so Roman hits the ring, raises a finger, and in the back, and I'm like, the hell, y'all? He raises the finger, and in the back, someone raises their kid. Yep. I'm like, the babies are in the air. And the kid hadn't been about five years old. This was not a small kid. No, that, that kid, <laughs> you know, you, you, the tummy was showing. <laughs> that, that's a grown kid. <laughs> Roman asked Greenville to join him and acknowledge Jimmy Uso. And there's some cheers. It was good. It was some good loud cheers. They've already been cheering, though. And he wasn't too pleased. He's like, I don't do this often. I don't do this. So, look, please join me and acknowledge Big Jim, and then they really start cheering and popping for him and all that. And so Roman, he cuts his promo. And it's a far more animated Roman. So this is babyface Roman. This is the Roman who was trying to, as a babyface, cut a promo four and a half years ago. Maybe, nope, yeah, about six, five or six years ago. He loved the crowd. He was there for the crowd. And they're like, get the hell away from us. <laughs> so Roman talks about having it all and then losing it and they were the ones but not anymore and then the fans are chanting in unison yes you are I'm like okay that's that's different yeah trying to give you some serious moral support keep that keep your self esteem up yeah Jimmy points out that they're not he's like we're not we're not he's like, and, and, and Roman has no Ula Fala around his neck. He doesn't have a tribe. And you can see Roman, it's like hitting the heart hard. Mm -hmm. He was soaking. Yes, Jimmy says they need help and he knows one person they can get help from. 
and the fans start chanting yeet and Roman says no yeet <laughs> you can see it I don't want him ever to darken my doorstep and so Jimmy makes note that look of all the family and I think he said of all the of all the family I'm the only one that still acknowledges you yeah and I'm like okay I don't I guess he's saying listen to me you know I guess that's what he's saying like I acknowledge you listen to me but Roman did make a point like look I don't have a tribe I, I'm not a wise man you know I'm the original tribal chief but I'm not the tribal chief that's been taken the belt's been taken the money <clears throat> the money you know and what he's, he said was like yeah Jimmy's like you know we want to buy a house he was like well look just buy them all and I'm like uh, I get that you're trying to keep a heelish stick with that, but that humble bragging, uh, you can hear the fans were a little put off by that. You can, you can tell them like, uh, you, wanna, you don't want to go there. So, okay, J Jimmy came back at Bad Blood. He's here, and he acknowledged that he still acknowledges them. So he's got, so at least there's two. Team building. So next, we get the U.S. title match. Carmelo Hayes versus L.A. Knight. Champion comes out second, so that's, it's nice to see that. They report that A.J. Styles has like, uh, what is it, a lateral uh, ligament tear or something in his foot or some something like that. I don't know, but he, I assume if it's... Huh? To the Google. I don't even do that. It's just, ugh, ugh. Besides, I use a cozy. Um, but I figure if AJ Styles is back next week or the week after, then it, it was a work. When you have a, a foot injury like that, you done torn something, you, you're you gone for a few months. It's a mid, it's a midfoot ligament sprain. Midfoot ligament sprain. So rest, ice, heat painkillers a few muscle relaxants here and there and you should be back in a week and a half two weeks depending upon how severe it is that's if it's even you know aj probably just came back this ain't the right out climate we'll just leave aj is good he is damn good at selling a possible injury <laughs> i've watched him too many years so <laughs> he's he's damn good um so for the most part, um, well, Andre Andrade is out there, but for the most part, Knight controls the match. Get a few two counts and some slightly big moves. He got this little pop up power slam, which was nice. And I say little only because it's not a it's not a match ending move. Is is not even that. It's just something to do now. When it used to be a finisher, not for him, but for quite a few others. Hayes lands a counter thrust kick. But Knight slowly retains control, even hitting the double jump, diving elbow drop, only for a two count. When I think that move should really just put him away. I like it. Hayes counters the BFT with the handstand, hit the scissor kick, half lands the spinning H crusher for a two count. And I like that move, and I hate the fact that it's not even his finish. It's a suplex that he transitions into an H crusher. I don't know why he don't put that as a finish. That's nice. Um, and then after a few counters, now he hit the snapmare driver, three count. Then after the match, Andrade gets in Hayes' face, talks a little trash before leaving him. And I'm sitting here like, y'all are tied at three and three, so I know what y'all are doing. And I would like it if, how can I say this? If they do, to break this thing, they do a best of three falls. Seventh match, best of three falls. Take up... 30 minutes of SmackDown. Hmm. There you go. Backstage, nope. Jim... Oh, what? I was about to say, but you know what that would mean. What? It would mean it would mean a 30-minute match on a pay-per-view. 30-minute match on a pay-per-view? No, it's still no SmackDown. It's not... I don't like the term throwaway match because it's not. It's just one of those... This is what... As, uh, it's no, kind of hard for... What? It's not a throw. It's not a throwaway match. It's just a rivalry under. Yeah, 
And this is, it don't, it seems weak, but this is the top level of mid card. This is, this is how they treat the top level of mid card. They don't get much. They don't get much at all. And it doesn't feel important. That's the issue I have with it. Bloodline stuff, Cody, Randy, Kevin Owens, that all feels important. This doesn't have it. And that, that bugs me because LA Knight is good. Andrade, we know he's good. A bit indie-ish, but good. Carmelo Hayes, from what I've seen, he is so improved, I want to see him wrestle. But it don't feel important. And that, that's bugging me. Um, backstage, Jimmy meets Cody. Jimmy Uso meets Cody Rhodes, who warns him that Solo isn't the same guy he was when you left. And Jimmy gives him respect for the, you know, hey, you won the belt, respect, you got that, you're doing good, so there we go. I'm a baby face, you're a baby face, we part ways. <laughs> then, whoo, this right here frustrated me to no end. The women's tag team title match. This, mm. so we get NXTs. We've seen these people before. I forgot what it was, Cedric. We've seen them, but it's Lash Legend and Jakarta Jackson. We've seen them in some company. I can't remember what it was. Sure, was it NWA? It might have been. It might have been. Was it also um, Women of Wrestling? Was it them? Mm, was it there too maybe I, it's possible um, but they make their entrance and eventually Kevin Owens he interrupts coming down the, the aisle on the mic and they're like he's not supposed to be here so when he starts talking on the mic they cut the mic Kevin goes to commentary and he uses the headset so he does the thing about not turning on Cody because Cody had already turned on him so he's going with that angle Cody makes his way to the ring and I'm gonna, while I get that this gives the air of a shoot then they're wiping their feet on this particular woman's match to someone like me this looks ugly on WWE's part they could have done this at any juncture of the show any part this was, to me, completely disrespectful. Very disrespectful. Um, so they bring up the fan, they, they talk, they don't show, but they bring up the fan cam of Kevin Owens attacking Cody after Bad Blood. So then Randy Orton comes out and he tries to stop it and he takes hold of Kevin from behind. Kevin thinking is probably one of the staff throws a back elbow and Orton, you know, he catches it that he retaliates with a punch knocking Kevin down and Kevin looks emotionally hurt <laughs> and Randy looks very guilty. But this, that's good stuff just at the wrong part of the show. So back from the break, so do all that, then take a commercial break, come back, the tag title challenges are now boasting. Their music is playing. So Jakarta Jackson, Lash Legend, they're up there trying to get this thing back. And so it's not good enough. Now now they got to show this uh, NXT champion, Trick Williams. I don't know why. I mean, okay, the people that watch NXT will see him there. And they got Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. They're out there uh, sitting like not far from the fans. And they try to pass off Chelsea Green stinking. She needs to bathe. She's yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay, if she smells that bad 20 or 30 feet from you, why aren't the fans who are five or six feet from her not smelling anything? I'm like, y'all need to quit that 80s crap. It's, it's over. Stop. Be a star, they say. <laughs> the champions come out to their individual music. So it lets me know that this tag team is... is not permanent. I already knew it was sort of that mentor kind of thing. Like, this is how we do it. This is our style. Let me help you do this and find yourself. That's 
what Bianca Belair is doing with Jade Cargill. Uh, they try to pass off Green, smell it bad again, you know, and yet the fans around her aren't noticing anything. So this is a tag team match. Meta Girls, Jakarta Jackson, and Lash Legend. And I keep wanting to call her Lash LaRue. Uh, versus Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair. No team name that I know of. Come out the individual music. At least they batch and they got double team moves. I'm waiting, what, six months to a year when they break up brutally and they fight each other for no gain. That's what I'm waiting on. But just think about how that they just treated this tag team. Both, both of these women, you know, this tag team title match. That's what they did. And so now the champions are off kilter from jump as Cargill had to break up a pin because Bianca caught the business. And the, the match is crunched. There, there's no pro wrestling. It's just move after move because now they got to crunch everything that they wanted to do for about five or six minutes. They got to crunch it down in like roughly two minutes, two or three minutes. Then Green, she gets involved in the match, knocked over the announce table. The chin, they, I'm going to puke, I'm going to vomit. I'm like, shut your dumb ass up. The champs turn it up and they get a couple of moves in, they're finished. It retained the belts. And I had to know there was a sloppy end, not that it was a, any botch or anything, sloppy in terms of duration, because it was taken up by Cody, Randy, and Kevin. They could have done that at any, even, any other point, but they did this. So you got the quick, thorough beatdown of Bianca. Bianca makes the hot tag. Jade comes in, kick, kick. Bianca comes in, fresh as a daisy after taking this beating. Hit their finish, it's over. It was that quick. And I'm like, even though it was most likely set up that way, like, okay, you know what you're going to do. This ain't going to do it. I, I just hated that. I just hated how it looked. Um, Meta Girls, they're good. They're good. I like what they did. They were crisp. They didn't look stupid. They were they double team moves polished. They looked polished. So... I'm liking that. I kind of, kind of wouldn't mind seeing them again. I don't see Chelsea Green and Piper Niven teaming up. And when they do, it looks it look like two singles wrestlers just doing stuff until something else can happen. So it, it's kind of bothered me with that. Backstage, Randy, he gets Cody and tells him, look, calm down, yada, yada, get on your bus, calm down. Nick Aldis is like, I need you focused, Cody. You know, you, you're going to be representing us at Crown Jewel. We've got to win that match. So they're putting emphasis on that. That's good. Um, I got to say this. Jim Cordette called that belt ugly. I'm like, no, nah, it won't ugly. It was huge. But then again, my screen is always usually fuzzy anyway. VGA hookup, so... Uh, maybe it was ugly. And I, it was so messed up on my screen, I couldn't tell. I hated the green on the belt. I was like, that's Triple H's touch. But that's about it. Um, so, Randy Orton promises Cody that he's going to fix this whole mess that's been created. Nick Aldis points out the oddity of Randy Orton being the voice of reason. And I can't even disagree with that. I'm like, the guy who's allegedly mentally challenged and who hurts and injures people as his career stick is the voice of reason. I mean, he does have reasonable voices in his head. And they talk to him. They talk to him. <laughs> Naomi versus Nia Jax. I was like, all right. So there's a ton of players in this. So I skip because what do I always say about Naomi? I always say this. She will never win the big one, but she will always win things leading up to it. So I skipped, uh, let's see, Naya, I skipped Naya talking to Tiffany. I skipped Naomi getting to the ring to talk. I skipped parts of Liv Morgan talking with her assistants, which is Dom and Raquel, or Raquel. Um, so I figure since this is not for the title, Naomi might win this with some help and then lose later if she vies for the title. That was, that's my surmise of that. This match was long, and I skipped until I saw too many people on camera, which happened to be the end of the match, where Jax goes for the bonsai drop. Rodriguez 
distracts the ref. Liv Morgan hits Nia with, uh, yeah, no, no, was it Liv? No, I think it was Tiffany that hit Nia with, no, it was Liv. She hit her with the uh, briefcase in the hip, in the back, you know, and although Nia sold her head. Naomi gets the folding powerbomb because that's what they, everyone has to do with Nia Jax. When she does the bonsai, they got to get her up, powerbomb her. But she couldn't flip over Jax. But she got the pin. And after she got the pin, then she jumped and flipped over because she won't, she won't get out of that hold any other way. Naomi wasn't. She couldn't, like, you think she could just stand up and be done with it. Nope. If you look at it, she, if, you, if she didn't flip over, they're going to be stuck looking like two dogs in heat. So that, that's how that was going to look. So Ripley, she comes in and she attacks Rodriguez. Liv runs into the ring where Jax grabs her and Ripley kicks Jax in, the, Jax in the face, beats down Liv a little bit before she's saved, and then in scene. Ah, uh, so now you know I might need help on this actually because this is this is bad. This is bad. Um, in the back, Nick Aldis makes the seventh match for Hayes and Andrade. Hayes isn't happy about that? Okay, fine. Then this forgotten Hispanic faction wants a match. They want belts. They're jealous of everyone else. They don't mention their name. Nick Aldis doesn't even mention their name. Um, and then he says, Nick Aldis says he has a hand-picked tag team. And if their people can win somehow, some amazing way, if they can win, then they'll get a title shot. And I'm like, okay. So I had to note, high chance it could be the Lucha Brothers that he brought in. And to be honest, I don't even care. Considering how WWE treat their tag teams, who in their right mind would expect anything positive to come from it? Literally, for a tag team match, for a possible title shot, you're going to bring back a team that ain't been around for weeks. <laughs> and then and then they're going to introduce a new tag team that hasn't beaten anybody and the winner would get a title shot. That wow. So then we get a little promo from Solo and he says, "Hey, you know, Jimmy, you know you're the big brother, but I'm the tribal chief." And it's like, "All right." And I'm okay. I'm like, he, he, he looked good doing it. It's just, it's hard for, I'm just saying this, it's hard for people of melanin to look tough with blonde hair. <laughs> it's, this dude could literally go into the fence and shoot somebody in the throat. And I'll be like, why did you not block the bullet? <laughs> It's kind of messed up, but it was like he look. It looks weak. Why? You no, know, his bullets are probably blonde too, or or no, the bullets probably got a black streak down the middle, just to be opposite. <laughs> so in the back, DIY and Street Profits they're arguing. Nick Aldis like, look, y'all had your shot. Ladder match, it was amazing, but that was your shot. It's over. So they go back to arguing. Aldis is looking off in the distance and he sees a struggle. So he goes down there, and this Kevin Owens kicking the hell out of Orton on the ground. Uh -huh. Just kicking him. Like uh, Sam Witwicky kicking the car. <laughs> he was whooping him up. And see, I knew you get that. <laughs> Kevin shouts about Orton picking sides. Is, and I figured it's safe to say, it's safe to assume, Randy didn't fix it. I think that's fair. Randy didn't fix it. Either that or Kevin Owens is just going back to his paranoid ways. He is, it's rumored, heavily rumored that he's going to leave WWE and go to AEW. So this might be his swan song. So he done made enemies out of two. Um, I assume if it's involved, Sami Zayn might say, hey man, what are you doing? And he's like, you got to help me. So maybe it'll be a tag match or Sammy come down there to help and then he turns on Sammy. Um, I figure Kevin might get lucky and almost beat Orton, but Orton messed him up. 
Sami Zayn got something to do with it. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn get one last match at a pay-per-view, Survivor Series most likely, and Kevin will be gone after that. That's what I'm assuming. Um, I predict TNA. Huh? I predict TNA. TNA? Yes. I, not even TNA wants to go to TNA. <laughs> that, I was going to watch TNA. I was going to keep going, but after the Hardy showed up, actually Matt Hardy, I was I lost interest. I couldn't lost do it. All the interest for that insanity. I just couldn't watch anymore. I was like, I'm done. Trying to hold on to the brain cells I got. Yep. AEW took a lot of them. Yeah. WWE ain't necessarily replenishing them, but I'm not losing anymore. You're not taking none. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Main event. Solo, he has the whole faction with him. I'm like, well, Jimmy, this ain't going to be easy. No. So, Solo warns Jimmy to a... Uh, what? Oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's so, just four on one. Uh, exactly. That's something I would have done in Fire Pro too. Mm-hmm. All the JW out there against somebody. So Solo wants Jimmy to acknowledge him, but Jimmy slaps him and takes over fast in the match. Meager slap. Yes. Highly telegraphed chops and punches by Jimmy. It was weird. It was like Jimmy was almost moving in slow motion. It looked weird. Um... And we get a new move, at least to me. Solo hit a spinning heel kick. I'm like, okay. It's not a vicious move, but no. it's new. <laughs> I don't... I'm going to let you get through this before I start talking. I just don't understand why Solo, number one, take the dye out of his hair, all right, or cut it all off, or at least get a crew cut, and add some chokes, some eye rakes, thumb to the eye, Chop blocks, work the leg a little. Some heel stuff. Rake that face over the top rope. Boot laces to the eyes. You know? Hold them by the nose and slap them across the top of the head. So, there's so much that can be done. Give them other reasons to boo you. And if you're going to add a move, add something impactful. Well, I mean, not only is it it's a kick, but he yeah. takes a nice flat back bump. That should save him some something. And oh, it's not a foot re- jab. You really trying. It's not a foot jab. It's not a foot he takes a, a nice flat back bump. We know he went to training school that day. Come on, man. I I he, I'm watching him grow. I'm watching him grow. But that's the problem. He's not growing. Give him time. What what, what in the world? Needs to drink his milk. Yes. Let the man drink his milk. So. <laughs> so. Now. Uh, I got a bag on him a bit here because. Really? Solo talks trash the whole fight. The oven tried to, to mute me. Okay. Okay, you going to get that or am I going to get that? I gotta get no, I get it. Hold up. No, we're gonna interrupt this. We're gonna do this. Hold up. I See, no, I won't. Mm-mm. Not pausing that. Smell good though. Rump roast. Good. Now, what I had to say was that um, Solo was talking trash to Jimmy like the whole fight. Yep. But he was like an NPC stuck on repeat. Yep. That's what I had to say. I had to, I'm like, he, he, I'm not the little, I'm not little brother anymore. No, no, by chronological order, you are the, you the little brother. You are little brother. It don't, it don't stop. Even if you cut his knees off. You say, hey, you still the little brother. Yeah. Even if all that's left is a future Futurama ahead of him, you still the little <laughs> brother. I'm not the little brother anymore. I'm the tribal chief. And I'm like, he got some. Some hang up from childhood. Yeah. What did Jimmy do to you? For real. Do we have to pull out a doll? (laughs) That is a lot of insecurity from Solo. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a ton of it. 
Let's see what else. Solo eventually gives Jimmy a very long time to recover, and then yeah. Jimmy counters the running hip attack with a foot jab. Yeah. And see, I ain't calling it a super kick because it doesn't knock anyone down. If it ends the match or stuns them long enough to possibly end the match, I'll call it a super kick. Other than that, it's a foot jab. Uh, Jimmy knocks the bloodline off the apron, hit a not so well Samoan drop for a two count. Oh, it's terrible. Jacob distracts Jimmy. Solo hits the Samoan slap spike for the three count. It's a chop to the clavicle. That's, that's what it is. No idea what a clavicle is. It's uh, right collar next bone. to your neck. It's right there. Right next to your neck is that bone, the, the collarbone. Collar uh. From your shoulder to the neck, from your trapezius, you rub down, you feel that, that bar. That's, and it runs almost from the shoulder all the way right before the throat. It, yeah. That's what that is. That, I feel like that move would be a signature move to a chokehold. <clears throat> he did that. Who did what? Stone Cold. He would slap people right there at the collarbone. Yeah. Um, after the match, the bloodline jump on Jimmy. Roman comes out walking, jogging, and then drops Jacob like he's nothing. And then he drops everyone else. And then Roman and Solo in the ring. They start chanting over the counter. Yeah. Okay, okay, OTC. Um, then I just like making that joke. So then they start fighting, and then Jacob shuts that down. And I'm like, I'm waiting for new help for Roman and Jimmy to come in there. No help. Like Piccolo said, there will be no help. There will be no help because there was none. So they just had to take that beating. Yep. Jacob hit the BME and landed on his knees. Such flush. that it was. I did not like that. Nope. He landed on his knees completely and did not land on the person he was trying to hurt. Not even really a little bit. Is he's I hope he doesn't keep doing it that way. He'll have some knee problems. And and he's gonna get bigger as he get older. He can't afford to have knee problems. Yep. Solo hit the Samoan spike on Reigns. And <laughs> Cedra said, to, talking about Reigns, why are you holding your throat when he hit you in the chest? <laughs> he did. Jimmy sits next to Roman Reigns saying, we need, we need help. help. I'm like, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I'm going to, I'll get to mine later, but you, I'm, I'm, get, go ahead and get it out, girl. Go okay. Get it out. Okay, okay, okay. No one is going to wrestle as impactful as they do in New Japan. It's not going to happen. They don't even really wrestle with impact in New Japan anymore. They, they, yes, they do. At least they did for the G1. Those hits were satisfying. Okay, like G1 they, was different. Yeah. Like they were getting some business accomplished. I, I don't need them to do that. But as light as they're working, they, they work too light. This is light ass slaps. What? What are you trying to do? Hurt him or give him a skin rash? Everything was light. This match was long. Everything was light. It was a whole bunch of walking around like Christian and talking NPC trash. But he wasn't really doing anything for Jim to be laying there as long as he was. I'm like, if you're supposed to be Samoan, right? Can I see some impact? That's, that's what we grew up on. I mean, well, okay, you're going to run and slam your hip into him. Tony Storm does a better job of it. Yeah. A way better job of it. And then your man, Jacob, comes in and does the same thing and just makes yours look like crap. If, you, if, you're, if you're a finisher, which it is, the Samoan Spike, why don't you work on his head more or work on his neck more? You know, some, some, some swinging neck breakers or something. It's just, I ain't your little brother. Ass to the head. That's it. He didn't do his miserable Samoan job. That got, count, that, that, that got countered. It's, what, there's no growth. Oh, he added a leg lariat. He added a move that a lighter man should be doing. Well, la di da. Hey, Tenzan won't like. But Tenzan's like, it hurt. 
<laughs> you see, that was the counter right there. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I know y'all saying he's drinking his milk and eating his Wheaties and saying his prayers, but he need to do more because he's just doing the same thing every match. Now, if your same thing is good, then you can get away with it. But his same thing is not good. I'm not even talking about the aesthetics. I'm not going to even get into that. Because the aesthetics could slide if he were impactful. You should not have to be in wrestling for 10 to 15 years to be impactful. Why not? Okay, first of all, your move set is going to be your, the move set you want to do. You make it look good. And he's okay? not doing that. The entire time of wrestling, just let everybody know, the years in wrestling is all about supposedly learning ring psychology, learning how to not just call a match, but be led in the match as well. That's like 101 being led in a match. So many times you learn how to almost maybe even possibly call a match. You know, so it, it's, it's what his what? This is his what, sixth year? Nobody, oh, no, can, nobody can teach him how to do a proper Samoan drop. He, why don't why don't Jacob teach him? He's been in wrestling for six years. <clears throat> yeah, six years. Okay, granted, that's a bit too long to be where he is. He should be further along. But okay, all right, Cedra. So what? You want the man to come in with with power bombs and and brain busters and power drivers and just AEW it up? No, that is not what I said. He said his impactful. Impactful. Okay, let's see. What's his finisher? The Samoan Spike? Why don't he work on the neck and head? Some clotheslines. He clotheslined so him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm half messing with you. You know, some 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 neck breakers, some 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 cravats, something, a few more heel moves. You know, a headlock and thumb to the eye when the ref isn't looking. Something to piss off the fans aside from just sucking. I get you. I get you. I can't disagree. I'm hoping that he get there. I'm hoping that he gets there. And they work so light that they got Tama Tonga looking stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Tama can talk. Jacob can talk. Tama can scrap. Yep, but they won't let him. They, they they just make him do the wild man thing, and it don't really look that good. No, it doesn't, because it's light. Yeah. He always roll him on his back and just monkey stomp him. He, yeah. Wouldn't be able to take it, though. I mean, beat him in the, the shoulder blades, you know, and whatnot, yeah. But then if, you know, you and anyone else say, well, why ain't he beat him in the back of the head? Yada, no, yada. no, no, that's absurd. You got brains up there. So you can't keep wrestling if they're not intact. Yeah, the, what people wanted from Tai Chi and about a quarter of the AEW roster and probably about 5% of the WWE roster. But I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm enjoying the rebuilding process of Roman's empire. Yeah, that seemed like it's got some promise that rebuilding versus the bloodline that is probably going to be the survivor series maybe hikaleo will show up maybe you know i would like to see chase owens there i like uh, to see chase Samoan. owens part of it huh <laughs> honorary uh, no i'm honorary tongan yeah I was. You want, I, my, you want my predictions on it? Go ahead, man. Well, the more, well, if I'm going with the easiest prediction imaginable, they're probably going to try and get help from Sami Zayn and Jey Uso. Yeah. That is the most likely option. Yeah, I forgot about Sami Zayn popping them in the in the back. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, since I'm already on cage match, there are people that would agree with you that the solo match was not good. <clears throat> it, I didn't like it. I wasn't happy I, with it. And it seemed I, like Wrestling Jimmy was busting down what Solo should be able to do. Hmm. 
It's, it's a lot to think about. It really is. <sighs> okay. Yeah, out of the six matches there, one is not rated because it was less than five minutes. Two were dark matches. The solo match was the lowest. And the Naomi match was the highest. <laughs> Ew. Naomi's match. Look, <laughs> Naomi's match might have been good, but I won't go watch it because I know, I know what Naomi is. She's fodder. That's it. She's fodder. She's, she's like, if it was sex, it's like you're building up to the finish and then you just leave the house. What the hell? You want to know who else is, want to know who else is fodder? Who else? Dominic, when it comes to WWE title matches. He's the Naomi. He's going to win a lot until the big match. Oh, no. I actually have to show you this because he's got a WWE title match. He actually got a match? He got a title match against Cody Rhodes. How? I don't know. It's just funny as hell. <laughs> how, how, how you get a title match against someone that you're not even on the same show with? He doesn't. Dominic doesn't even have a belt. Are you sure they haven't mistyped it or something? Looking at the cage match, I sent the link. You just it had oh. Jay Uso beat Braun Breaker. Friday Night SmackDown event data. Wow, cage match wrestling. It, and see the the crown jewel belt, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I just don't like the green on it. It's a shiny belt. <laughs> it looks gold. It looks gold. That's good. I don't know why the yeah, I do agree. I don't know why the green is there, but <clears throat> I think that's just Triple H's touch. Here there it's more like Jade. Cargill. Hmm. Good point. Hmm. Wow. Okay. We'll see what comes of it. I don't expect anything good. But I'm going to close up shop now. It's, it's been, yeah, 42 minutes. I hope everybody enjoyed this. I, I enjoyed this. Yeah. So this has been Cedric and Cedric for CR Wrestling Commentary, along with me, of course, reviewing Friday Night Smackdown-ish. And with that, we want you all to be cool, be chill, be safe, and we'll see you next time.